My friend, rising star in the house. I like it. Lewis, how are you? Great. How are you? Thanks. Uh, great. Uh, well, actually, let me take that back. We're okay. We've, we've been better, okay, market-wise. Okay. Even yeah, the S&P's sure. up 11. Yeah. We expect, if they're seeing what you've done, that the market will be unchanged or lower by the time <laughs> this interview is over. I'll do my best. work cut out for you, but you're up to it. We'll see. Good. <laughs> you're in from Pittsburgh. Yes. You are... How old? 30? You said? 30. 30. Perfect. And um, you are a Christmas baby. <laughs> I'm going to walk on water later. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Christmas so, miracle. I have two questions about your life that I need to know. Because okay. I've actually never met anybody that was born on Christmas Day. Uh-huh. Are you mad at your parents for Christmas, for being a Christmas baby? Or was it, a, was it, you know, did you get to have a normal birthday? Yeah, I have a normal birthday. I really do. Oh, it's surprising cool. me. I've got a lot of sweaters, though, too. So <laughs> Yeah. Do you have? Is there like a? Is there like a club? Like, are you have a lot of other friends, or you know, that, that you've met over the years that are Christmas babies too? I went to high school with a girl who was a Christmas baby. And wow. We to this day still wish each other a happy birthday. Oh, nice. Just because she shares in that pain with me. So. <laughs> and my last question is: grows ghost peppers. Yes. Um, the the super. I mean, there's like all these different kinds of ghost peppers, aren't there? Uh-huh. Is this just a hobby? It's a hobby. It's fun. Yeah. You throw a few flakes in some soup, and then you can also prank your friends, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> so how many ghost peppers? Because Tony grows like no, the guy, no, the guys actually and the research team love. Yeah, no. High. But how, how many how many plants do you have? <laughs> so I grow about fifteen different kinds every year. Wow. And I have twenty plants or so. Wow. And and you do this just because you like you you take them yourself, give some away. That's it. Yeah. Cool. I'll give you some. Beautiful. I, I I need some. Carries him wherever he goes. Okay. So Lewis has a very interesting story, and I'm really glad you reached out to us to to tell you know our viewers and um, peop, our 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 um, community loves rising stars because you know it's you know, whatever it, it makes them feel like you're one of them. Sure. Uh, you don't want to be one of us anyway. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we can't be saved. You can be, you know you can have you can have some real success. <laughs> Um, you started trading recently, mm-hmm. only a couple of years ago, right. and you are trade. You said pretty steadily for the last a little over two years. A little over two years, yeah. Yep, beautiful. I, I just want to give him some pretty steadily. Some, he said every day for the last two yeah. years. I'm giving people some every context. I, I want to give a little bit, a bit about your background so people know. Mm-hmm. Undergraduate, it's on there. Just came, um, and you're after you graduated, you. You with your undergraduate degree, which was in what finance, finance and accounting, finance and accounting. Yep. You went to work in the financial service industry. Correct. You thought there was. You traded a little bit. You thought there bit. was more out there, mm-hmm. and you decided to go back to get your graduate degree. Correct. You went to Boston College, mm-hmm. and after you got out of Boston College, you went to work for a large financial institution, helping to do portfolio management analysis. Correct. Okay. On that the last management side. Yeah, that lasted a little, a little over a year, whatever, mm-hmm. and you decided that there's more to this. Yep. You, at the time, were, let's say, 27, 28, you decided mm-hmm. to um, start trading, yep. and that's what you wanted to do. And there's a lot of people listening today that that's what they want to do. Sure. And you decided to make a career out of this. Mm-hmm. You took all the money you had saved up over the years and everything else. Yep. And IRA, 401k, right. liquidated. You're a, you're, you are a as we would say, a property, you're trading your own capital, right? Correct. Okay. And hence the Lewis C. story rolls on. <laughs> Is that fair? That's fair. To put everybody. Yep. You have, I'm not going to give the specifics, you have a, um, you have a, I would call it a sizable account, but I'm not going to talk about, you know, real sure. numbers. And uh, I like how you say you're a contrarian thinker, but you don't have a contrarian personality. <laughs> and, I like to think so. And you've never bought an option contract to open a position, which is something that in a decade or two decades ago, nobody could ever say that. Mm. Today, it's a little bit different. You are product indifferent. Right. Trade, you don't care, as long as it's liquid and has a lot yep. of, uh, has enough volatility and enough you know activity. Okay, now it's your turn. Let's talk strategy. Sure. What strategies do you employ? So I only sell strangles. To open. I usually look at a 20 delta strangle okay. to start, and then 
If I want to be a little more aggressive, I may get into the 30 delta or 35 delta. Uh, but for the most part, the default is a 20 delta strangle. Do you have certain volatility um, uh, criteria that you look for? Obviously, I look for a volatility pop, and that dictates how aggressive I'll get. Being product indifferent is really nice because you can have extremely uncorrelated products. And so I usually have a little bit of everything on. Even if volatility is very low, you can still make money in some of those other products that you might not think How many could. different positions do you tend to carry at one time? I have at least 10 and up to about 20, the very most. Do you find it difficult to, you've been doing this only a couple of years, do you mm -hmm. find it difficult to manage 10 to 20 positions, um, you know, simultaneously? For me, I think that's about the right number. So the answer is no, I, don't, I think that's a reasonable amount. If I had 40 positions, maybe then that gets to be a little too much. Did you start <coughs> two years ago trading this way, or did you start trading some other way? You said you never bought an option, so there must have been, right. you've been pretty consistent. But yep. did you start with defined risk, never buying an option? Did you start with undefined risk right away? I just went full in undefined risk. You were just confident. But you had some experience, you know, obviously had a lot of financial experience before in, in, in the sure. industry. Yep. I had some experience, and I had a professor at Boston College that allowed me to do an independent study and I was looking at put call parity and stumbled on the fact that volatility was overstated in the S&P 500 and started watching tape and eventually put those two pieces together with the mechanics of managing a strangle and then also having that knowledge in the back of my mind that okay I've done this research myself I do believe that volatility and fear is overstated and that in the long run if you're in uncorrelated products this should be a profitable venture. When you first started out, Lewis, were you more directional initially or were you kind of delta neutral right from the start? So the options were always delta neutral, but I would buy and sell futures contracts um, throughout the day just scalping. And I looked at my account just for this year and realize I've lost about 25% of my account value just due to being what I would call a directional hero. Well, and you knew something. I'm mean, right. making a joke, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, when I really, really knew something. When you were sure. Yeah, <laughs> when I was sure that everybody else was wrong. Did you originally start out at like the 20 delta, like you said, or did you start out at like a five or 10 or 15 delta? Did you went right to the 20 delta? I and went right to the your, 20 that's delta. That's your comfort zone. That was where my comfort zone was. So what if a position started to move against you? So as a position moves against me, I generally don't do anything until I reach a break-even point. Okay. And then at that point, I'll roll up that untested side. Now, there are times when it's advantageous to roll up a little bit, even if you haven't breached that break-even point. So for instance, if you start out with a 20 delta strangle, right. and that 20 delta goes to a 35 and five, let's call it, just making up yeah, numbers here, fine. but uh, it doesn't make sense to hold on to that five delta position. Not giving you any protection a anymore. Standpoint. Yeah, and yeah. it's not giving you any protection. So I'll bring that up to about a, a 10 or 12 delta, somewhere around there, to still get that directionality in for the position to come back, but also take in a little more premium. How, when you initiate your positions, because you're, it's you sound like you're, you're kind of trading by the book, which I love, you know, because it's, you, you're trading clearly by mechanics that we mm. we encourage everybody to use um are you how far out are you starting when you when you make trades like what's mm. the duration what do you think is your average duration that you set up the trades for average duration is somewhere around 35 days to 40 right now Perfect. i've extended duration just because there's volatility in almost nothing that i trade so i'm looking at 60 days out right now personally, but that's just where my comfort zone is from a risk perspective. Have you found that when you put a position on, are you are you averaging into the positions, meaning are you putting on like a very small quantity at first and putting more on, or are you basically just making the trade and then moving on to the next trade? I make the trade and move on. I'm, I haven't legged into you don't add or to, out of, You don't leg yep. in, you don't add, any, add to any positions. Yep. I may leg out a little bit. Yeah but generally don't leg in. If it goes poorly, and being in so many different products that are uncorrelated, you're always gonna have what you call a problem child sure. that's misbehaving. Sure. All right, is there, when you have a position and it's starting to go your way, what are what's your criteria for taking those positions off? 
I look at the amount of capital I have to put up okay. and then decide on an annualized basis, can I still collect enough premium? But in general, if I sell something for 2 or $3, let's call it $2, I'd like to think about taking the position off at around a dollar, maybe a little less. Sure. And is there a time frame? Like if you get to a certain number of days, you put it on with 35 days, are you trying to take it off at 20, 17, 15 in that range, half the time? Uh, half the time there, and then other times I'll go down to the 10, five-day range. It sounds like you are really, um, mm -hmm. you know, the way you're explaining this, it, it's very much in line with exactly the way we think. We do, we trade, we try to, um, you know, across the board. So let's talk about your first full year was 2016, right? No, 2015. So 2017 is the first full year. It started okay, so April 21st of 2016. Oh, April 21st. Okay, yep. perfect. April 21st. I like how you get the exact dates. Oh, you got a beautiful little graph there. I like this even better. So you, this is 2017. I am looking. Correct. Okay. I thought we had 2016. No? We, we, we have two charts. We have a cumulative performance. There you go. They, just, they give it to you. Yep. Uh, That's perfect. all time. Okay. And then he has last year. Okay. Right. Leave that up for one second. Yep. So you started in April 22nd, 2016, and you, um, uh, and how did you do, what, what's the first year? Like, not the first full calendar year, but just how did you do in 2016? So 2016 was 72%, and that was a partial year. It was a great year to trade Delta Neutral. It was absolutely the best because we <laughs> yep. did absolutely we closed un pretty much unchanged. 2015, mm -hmm. 2016, we pretty much closed unchanged. Sure. So you made how much? Seventy what? Seventy two percent. Seventy two percent from April to December thirty first yep. in two thousand sixteen. Now, did you think there was something weird about that, or did it seem normal to you? There was something not quite right. Okay. It was it was a little too easy. You were selling, you were, I expected to not do well initially. So you were selling strangles, you expect to not do well, and you make 72% on a fairly substantial amount of capital. Mm. And you're thinking to yourself, either I'm a genius, I should have been doing this my entire life, I didn't, why did I even go to college? <laughs> More so the second one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, or what's wrong with this picture? Yeah. You know, why isn't everybody doing this? Sure. Okay, whatever. It's because you just, you know, you just found it, whatever. It, you, know, mm -hmm. you ask all these questions. And then all of a sudden, along comes 2017, which is very different. 2015, 2016, the markets didn't do anything. Sure. We, we kind of normalized with respect to market movement in 2017. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a year where there's very little um, two-sided movement. Yep. So... Um, tell us about 2017. 2017 started out really well, very consistent, and was actually in cattle. You see that rather precipitous drop there. That's a cattle move? That's a cattle move. So oh, my cattle God, move you're all over the place. More yeah. in a couple weeks than it had since about 2003. I was reading online where traders were going bust. And I ended up not rolling out the position. I reached my maximum pain point. And looking back on it, I wouldn't have made money there, but certainly would have recaptured a lot of that capital. Got it. And yeah, there's always some outlier or things like that. Right. But so, so what was the cumulative performance for 2000? What was the performance for 2017? So 2017, those numbers are a little old. I'm now at plus 17% for the year. Plus 17%. Correct. Good job. Nice. That's a nice comeback from a mm -hmm. you know from a mm -hmm. from a bad drawdown. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in 2016, for three, for three quarters of the year, 70% of the year, it was plus 70-something percent, and then mm -hmm. 2017 plus 17%, just right. so I get the numbers right. Yep. Okay. And that's on your total portfolio? Correct. Using about how much of your cash? Of your capital? I'm all over the place. I could use zero. I could use up to 100% a few times. Uh, but in general, I'm around that 50% of capital. Around it. So you always have some kind of capital available. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And what do you think about, like, when you think about your, um, you talked about your directional drawdown. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you said you had about a 25% drawdown on just your directional scalping and things like mm -hmm. that. What other kind of mistakes have you made? The biggest mistakes I've made have been not rolling out and taking that delta that you go into the last five or 10 days and reestablishing the position out another 30 days. And if it takes, 
a year to get that back directionally, just keep rolling it out. Yeah, and and you you've you found that to work in the underlying. I mean, you haven't you've been lucky in that you haven't got caught in in something that just hasn't come back. Sure, you, you know, um, you have a lot of commodity based underlyings. You know that mm -hmm. have been two sided as opposed to you know some of you you've you've effectively avoided some of the stock sure. moves that haven't you know yep that haven't turned around at all which is which is listen that's a credit to you know to what you're doing sometimes it's a little bit of luck you know sometimes a little bit of luck sure. i mean sometimes you you'll end up with a year where you know the stocks move crazy and next year the commodities move crazy you know you never know mm -hmm. so you have to just be you have to be careful in that regard um, what do you think you do differently in 2018 like what did you learn in 2017 that you're going to do differently in 18 i think trading less would be good in terms of scalping. And I've taken that down to maybe 5% mm -hmm. of what I actually am trading. So I'm looking forward to that. And Sometimes you need to just stay there. busy, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. it's just about staying busy. Yep. Yeah. I found that the, my best weeks are when I'm sitting there and doing nothing because I have the positions on, everything's behaving, and I'm not rifling off trades right and left. Are you able to stay, um, Are you, is this enough uh, is this enough engagement simulation for your mind? I mean, are you are you, um, uh, are you, do you can you stimulate the the senses enough by you know being a self directed stay at home or office? I don't know where you trade from, mm -hmm. but whatever. You know, is this enough to keep you intellectually challenged, intellectually engaged? I think it's the most intellectually challenging thing that I have ever done. So, really? Yes. So, like, compared to figuring out somebody else's portfolio value or what they should, right. the, the the distribution, you know, portfolio allocation. When somebody says to you, um, "How come? Why don't you just buy an index fund?" Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, which is I'm sure you've heard that before. Sure. Because uh, what do you say? I have to take a pause and just I shake my head a little bit, and I, I feel like people need to wake up and realize that it's not just passive index funds that are going to get you to where you want to be on a risk adjusted basis there are other ways to do things when you got out of uh, when when you got out of when you graduated from grad school and you got out of the um, and you worked for you went to work for a large financial service firm do you look back at that and go like what was i doing like i mean you know do you think about like the skill level there versus skill level that you've acquired now like does it does any of that stuff does it come into play when you think about you know opportunity and things like that sure i mean it's it's a little scary you realize the financial education even on a financial advisor side is pretty interesting for me because i went in there and understood a little bit about options and really loved what i did loved the clients and got to work in private equity in a lot of different areas but when you look at the difference in education of what professionals know versus what the trader knows. It's it's huge. That gap is massive. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. And these are, and we're talking, we're talking customers too, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to sure. the people managing trillions of dollars. Is there anything about the market now that like what what makes you nervous about what you're doing? Like what, what's your biggest concern? So I'm gonna put this in terms of risk and how I look yeah, at sure. it. Risk for me in any one position, I'm willing to take a certain amount of instantaneous risk on the portfolio. Where I look at maybe three percent instantaneous. So you look at the risk. overall portfolio as opposed to just one position. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the long-term risk, I don't really care about because I can adjust the position to recheck that risk. And I think taking what you're comfortable with on a risk level is very, very important because. If my risk level, say, instantaneously is 3%, and really I'm only willing mentally to take 1%, you're going to make mistakes when you're trading. You're not going to be mechanical. You're going to become emotional. And one of the ways you can kind of tell that you're trading too large, you have too much risk, is when your heart starts beating a little faster and you're looking at it and you're going, well, I hope it goes up or I hope this happens. That's when you know you're in trouble a little bit and you should trade like a little smaller. Do you think that I'm, I'm going to kind of wind this up and ask do you, the most important um, what is the most important criteria then with respect to your success? Has it been the liquidity of the underlyings? Has it been managing your winners or has it been kind of 
the the strategies you've selected or the size of your positions? I know that's kind of a it's like a multiple choice question sure. with four different. I think size of the positions is the most important thing because yeah. that lets you cascade into yeah. being mechanical and not doing anything stupid. Yeah, I you know what, and it's so funny when you say that because we know that mm. and we still make those mistakes. Sure, like, sure, sure. You know, the only thing that I can handle being wrong in the market and everything else, but the only thing that's created drawdowns for me is just my size. Yep. You directional know. size, not the yeah, size sure. necessarily you're putting yeah, on. Yeah, but still, it, it's all, mm. even, even if it's non-directional initially, mm -hmm. everything everything's non-directional on day one. Until it becomes But on day five, sure. it's a directional <laughs> position. Sure. And then you're dealing with some kind of you know directional adversity and you have to figure out how to deal with it. Mm. Um, it's been a, what time? Oh, it's 9.03. Um, it's been a great discussion. Your performance over the last two years is spectacular, and uh, I hope that you're, you know, I'm, I'm confident, obviously, that you know, you sound like you've got your act together, and so uh, hopefully you can keep this up into perpetuity, and we'll maybe see you back in a couple of years. Who knows? Sure. But uh, thanks so much for coming out to Chicago for telling your story to the entire kind well, of tasty you. nation. And uh, well, hopefully we'll see you on the on the road when we hit the East Coast. Uh, Definitely come to know. Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh's <laughs> not on our list for this year, but you never know about next year. Yeah. You know, I mean, we have, we have a lot of listeners in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so looking forward to it, yeah. Lewis. Thank you so much. That thank was you awesome. so much for coming in. We're going to take you. a quick ninety second break. You keep up those great returns. We're going to come back with market measures next. Let's take.